You may remember a little while ago, I came to this amazing nursery on the central coast of New South Wales. I was taking a look at the ancient Japanese art of cloud pruning, and I even had a go myself. Well, if that piques your fancy, there is a huge world of topiary to explore. And for the beginners, there are so many basic shapes and sizes to get started on. So, Scott, how did you end up with this place? Well, 32 years ago, I opened a shop in Double Bay called Bay Street Gardens yep. and realised there wasn't much of a... many nurseries growing that much advanced stock in those days. I've been coming here for years to buy my plants for my own clients, and I love coming here. This place is incredible. I mean, how big is it? Oh, it's 28 acres. We do 40,000 in-ground plants. People wanted larger plants, more instant hedging, privacy from neighbours. Well, I don't know many nurseries that would grow hedging as, as big as this sort of stuff. Fertinia robusta there, great plant, very hardy. I know that you do a lot of your clipping by hand. How many guys have you got working here doing this sort of stuff here? The 14 guys, mostly through the summer months. And one of the benefits, I guess, of having that many staff is you have this incredible garden around your house as well that they can, they can keep clipped for yeah. you. Yeah. I love the, the outlook from the top of the deck. It just feels like all of this is, is your private garden. Very nice indeed. So, Scott, this is where it all begins, say, hey, with plants this size. Yeah, this is how we start our standards. So, that's a very unusual... This is Marea, right? Yes. Very straight and, and thin, aren't they? How do you achieve that? Well, we reduce the light to try and get the plant to grow taller quicker. The plant looks a bit sparse and spindly at this stage. What sort of fertiliser are you using? This is Osmocote. OK. This is eight to nine months slow release. Yes. We tend to use it every six months and a smaller dose. Yes. And then just pump it full of water as well? Yeah, water's 80% of it. You've got some in what look like we bags? We then here? put them into a root control system. OK. This is a copper-treated bag. There's copper on the inside or...? Copper spin-out, so okay. it stops the roots from penetrating the bag. Nice, and then so you just plant that directly into the into the ground? Directly into the ground. It's more stable in the ground. It keeps the plant more upright. And I guess it insulates the, the root zone as well, so you get, you know, it keeps it warmer. And does the plant, once it then gets out into its new home, does it put out roots really quickly? Yeah. Just establish yeah. it. to just come here and get inspired by all of the patience you've put into these plants. And these are some Bodonera, long nefolia balls. Good instant impact. Yeah. And this is, the, with the long leaf, is this sort of, it's a bit of an unusual buxus, so people wouldn't well, have seen it. Some people refer it to olive leaf buxus. Mm -hmm. This is teardrop, we just modified this from our normal cone shapes, just to give it a round bottom. Okay. This allows you to do an underplanting, yeah, put a nice. bit of flowers, something like that underneath. And this here, this is a whopper. How old would this be? Oh, that'd be 16 to 20 years now. And this started life as what we saw, those yeah, little marais, similar size. Width. And what are these? These are a triple Spartan. Yes. And this is Craig, one of our head pruners. Do you have any tips for, for pruning something like this? I've always found the best part is to keep your shears wet. OK. Prevents build-up. Yep. Otherwise, the foliage starts to fold in between, bruises it up. Does that produce any rust on the blades or not? I don't find it will, especially because these are constantly cleaned, sharpened. Slight wipe of WD-40 wouldn't hurt. Oh, lovely. So... Sharp shears yeah. and wet shears. Absolutely. Good to know. Tangelo is an interesting fruit. They respond really well to, to this sort of shaping at the right time, don't they? Yeah, you shape them during the... You can just trim off the green foliage at any time. Now, I've got a couple of these off you in the past, haven't I? That's a yeah. Nissa cone. That is something special. Yeah, we did these as a de uh, deciduous topiary range. There's a new range of camellia balls that we're doing. Yeah, they're sensational. 
Yeah. Look at the flower on that. That is oh, amazing. Yeah. This is a lovely flower. So, Scott, with these plants, where do they end up? What sort of gardens? Most of them are used as just statement pieces in residential usage. Yeah, lovely. Some of the bigger, bigger plants could go into just nice big feature pots, mm. balancing each side of a front door entrance. I hope that this has given you some inspiration, and if you love a topiary as much as we do, give it a crack.